Um, thank, uh, thanks everybody for being here and uh, thanks to the organizer for putting uh, uh, this series uh, together. So today I'm gonna talk about my paper, It Does Not Get Better, Expected Income Violation and Altruism. So it's a joint work with Julien Benistan. Um, so in this paper, um, the, the, the departure point is that people form expectations about uh, in certain outcomes that matter to them, for instance, their wage or their future uh, income, but uh, these expectations are often violated. So one can uh, think of the uh, a firm's wage policy that can change unexpected, unexpectedly, a macroeconomic shock like a pandemic or something like that, or uh, expectation can also be violated because individual uh, cannot uh, form good uh, expectations given the limited information that they have or uh, their bounded rationality. On the other hand, we know that expectation and especially expectation violation have an autonomous impact on behavior, meaning that the gap between expectation and realization of this uh, in certain outcome matter for how people behave. So I can give you three examples. So the first one is uh, this paper by Carden Dale in which they find that when the sport team loses unexpectedly, it triggers negative uh, emotion uh, in the fans that triggers uh, family violence. Second example that I can give is the, this paper by Gabarino et al, in which they show that people get more dishonest to avoid um, uh, 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 a bad outcome when this bad outcome is not very likely. So it, it shows that uh, to avoid a bad uh, outcome, when it was not in, uh, unexpected, people cheat or lie more. And last uh, example that uh, can be uh, evoked is this paper by uh, Abeler et al in 2011, where they show that uh, when people get a lower wage than the, what they expected, um, they tend to provide less effort. So this 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 shows the the importance of expectation and expectation violation on uh, subsequent behavior. So in this paper, what we will do is that we will try to measure to assess the pure impact of expected income violation on altruism. So basically, what happens if you end up with a wage or an income that is lower than uh, what uh, you expected? And we will try to see the effect of this uh, expectation violation on altruism. So the, the, the related question is, are uh, those falling, falling below expected income reduce altruism? And uh, symmetrically, uh, does exceeding expected income increase altruism? So for it to be the case, um, people must, have, uh, must use their expectation as references and uh, individual must want to close the gap between expectation and realization, which is the case in reference dependent model. So uh, if people uh, form their reference as, ex as expectations, and if people uh, want to close the gap between their uh, references and their uh, realization, then there might be uh, an impact of expected income violation on altruism. So that's what we will check in this paper. So in a lab experiment, we will manipulate the expected wage and the actual wage indef independently for a real effort task and uh, measure the effect of being above or below expectation on altruism using a standard, uh, simple dictator game. So to understand a little bit, uh, to predict a little bit what is going on with in this uh, experiment, uh, we develop a model in which one expected income uh, impacts one subsequent altruism. Uh, this model is interesting because it provides a pre distinctive prediction compared to existing models of social preferences. And last but not least, we will use physiological and declarative measures of emotion to explore the mechanism. So basically the idea is that uh, we will develop a model that depicts reference dependence and uh, there are some evidences and uh, some strong and anecdotal evidences that um, the impact of falling below one's references transit through emotion. And with uh, our physiological measure of emotion, we will have a way to measure this directly. So this, uh, this work um, is related to, 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 to a literature of social preferences and reference dependence. So I've identified broadly in this presentation two big strands uh, in this uh, literature. First, what happens when individual face losses relative to zero? Zero, what is the impact of facing losses relative to zero on social preferences? So the, the, first, uh, the first finding overall is that 
the behavioral effects are mixed. So you have a first set of papers in which uh, people uh, are asked to choose in mini dictator games between two uh, allocations with some negative uh, allocations. And, and in this paper, they generally find, the author generally find that individuals are more selfish in the lost domain. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have other paper in which uh, in dictator games, uh, dictators are endowed with a negative endowment and are asked to share um, to share uh, their endowment with a recipient. And in these situations, people are found to be uh, dictators are found to be more generous in the last domain. So, um, so uh, even if you have mixed if you have mixed results in this literature, it shows that. Uh, references and in this uh, case zero uh, as a reference uh, is uh, matters for uh, altruistic choices. There is also uh, a couple papers that we identify studying the effect of less and losses and gains relative to expectations on altruism. So these papers are strong, uh, st closer to our, our study, uh, but we still have significant uh, differences with this paper. So the first one that we want uh, that I want to mention is the one by Antinian, in which he finds no effect of falling below ex expected income uh, on altruism. So the, the, the difference with, this, with our paper is that in this paper, uh, decisions are mostly hypothetical. Only a, a small subset of participants get paid for their decision. Second paper is the one by Matarazzo et al, uh, in which in um, hypothetical choices, they find uh, an effect of expected income violation on altruism. But they do not find uh, that emotions play a role in this, this, this effect. So, so the differences with our, uh, with our study is that first, once again, uh, choices are mostly only hypothetical and the measures of emotions are only self-reported, uh, whereas we will use uh, physiological measures of emotions. So let's uh, jump into the design. So for this experiment, we have a very simple design that is in two parts. In the first part, people, uh, participants uh, do a real effort task for a fixed wage. So they have to uh, do all the real effort tasks to get this wage. And in the second part, they are endowed with five euros that they have to split in a regular dictator game. So that's the core of, uh, uh, of the, our design. In this design, we will vary in a three by two between subject design, the level of the wage for the real effort tasks. So for the real effort tasks, task participant can earn five, 10 or 15 euros. These amounts are uh, relatively high since the real effort task is calibrated to last uh, a little less than 10 minutes. On another dimension, we will vary the, info the timing of the information about the wage. So in the baselines, subject will receive their actual wage before the task. So in this, in this baseline, they know the, the, the wage that they will get for uh, the real effort task, and they get it before the real effort task. In the treatments, in contrast, participants um, receive 10 euros before the task and are told that after the task, with one chance out of three, they will uh, be able to keep 10 euros, the, the 10 euros, with one chance out of uh, three, five euros will be added to uh, to their wage and with one chance out of three five euro will be will be withdrawn for uh, from uh, their wage so the idea uh, of this design is that comparing baselines and treatment for a given wage allow to isolate the isolate uh, the pure effect of expectation violation on altruism for instance if you compare transfers in the dictator game uh, for a wage of five euro between baseline and treatment, what uh, isolate, or at least what we assume to isolate, is the effect of negative expected income violation on altruism. On top of this uh, simple behavioral design, we have uh, some measures of emotion. First, we have a physiological measure of emotion, skin conductance response. And uh, especially we will be interested in the emotional responses of participants in the treatment, treatment when they learn uh, the actual wage that they will get. So after they have performed the real effort task, when the task is revealed, we uh, record their re emotional reaction. And of course, uh, skin conductance responses only inform about whether people 
uh, add emotional reactions, but it doesn't uh, provide any information about balance of emotion. So we have a declarative assessment of emotions to know whether uh, people are angry, surprised, disappointed, so on and so forth. So that's uh, that's uh, the design. On top of that, uh, in terms of procedure, we have a, a randomization at the session level because we want every participant in the same session to have the same treatment in order to avoid uh, comparison within the sessions. And uh, the, the sequence of conditions was drawn before the experiment. One day before the experiment, we had, a, we had an online questionnaire with uh, demographics and risk and loss aversion uh, elicitation. So with uh, this design, we wanted to have uh, around 50 participants per cell due to no show, we are a little short of it. So we have between 44 and 52 participants for each uh, in each cell. So that's, that's uh, our sample. So in, term, in terms of theory, to, to predict or to understand what is going on, uh, what we expect uh, will be going on in the experiment, we design a simple theory in which a decision maker, I, um, who uh, is the dictator basically, is concerned about his profit, which is the sum, sum of his weight for the real effort task, plus the amount kept in the dictator game. But he's also concerned about the recipient profit, which is the wage of the recipient, and uh, the amount transferred, uh, received, that he receives in the dict dictator. On top of that, we have uh, a gain loss utility function, a, a, a part of the utility function that encodes for gains and loss relative to references. And uh, what uh, we model is that the decision maker, the dictator is concerned about the deviation between is expected profit and the, his actual profit, but also uh, about the expected profit, uh, the, the, the gap between the expected profit of the receiver and uh, the actual profit of the receiver. So that's that's the, the, the shape of the utility function of the motivation of the, of the dictator. Uh, so the gain loss utility function is super standard. It depicts loss aversion. But what uh, really matters is how um, this theory works. So what we have in mind, what we uh, theorize is that upon receiving instructions, participants anticipate the wage that they will get for the real effort task, and they make plan about the transfers they will do for this wage in the dictator game. So th this gives us uh, the references with respect to, to uh, the, 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 the dictator profit and the recipient profit. The idea, uh, the idea, more uh, clearly is that in the baseline we expect profit to be equal to um, to the expected profit meaning that participant correctly uh, anticipate the transfer that they will do in the dictator game and uh, in contrast in the treatment potentially profit would be different from expected profit both for uh, the, the dictator and the recipient so to put it schematically for a, a wage of five, we can expect that at least some participant will feel that uh, their profit is lower than the expected profit and uh, the uh, opposite uh, holds for uh, the wage of 15 euros. So what, the, what, what this model shows is that in uh, the treatments, especially in the low wage treatment, the wage equal five treatments, you can have a trade-off between transferring the amount you, you, had, you had planned to transfer and closing the gap between actual and expected profit. So I can give a, a small example to, to see how it works. So in the baseline, instructions set expected wage uh, to five. Then the decision maker for this expected wage of five plans uh, to transfer 1.5 euro. Uh, the dictator is rem uh, reminded of the actual wage after the, the, the real effort task and he carries out the transfer of 1.5. In contrast, in the treatment, the decision maker uh, has expectations that are, say, 10. It can be lower and can be higher, but it's we have to assume that it's strictly comprised between 5 and 15 euros. For these 10 euros, the, the, the decision maker plans to transfer, say, 2 euros. When he learns the actual wage, he feels a loss that he compensates by transferring, say, uh, zero, but anywhere uh, lower than two. So that's the idea of the theory that we will basically test in the lab. 
So the hypotheses are pretty straightforward given this, 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 this uh, theory for the low wage participants are so less in the treatment than in the baseline. Hypothesis two for the medium wage for the wage equal 10 participants transfer the same amount in the treatment than in the baseline. And hypothesis three for the high wage participants transfer more in the treatment than in the baseline. So let's turn to the data. So these are the, the descriptive statistics that uh, depict a trend that matches our hypothesis, but to, to test the hypothesis a little a bit more uh, further, we ran a, a, a regression in which we interacted the level of the wage with a, a treatment dummy to back out and to isolate the uh, pure uh, treatment effect in every condition. So this gives uh, the following behavior and result. First, first result, for the low wage, participants transfer less in the treatment than in the baseline. Transfer on average 0.5 uh, euro lower in the treatment than in the baseline, and this is uh, significant. And participants are 15 percentage points uh, more likely to transfer zero in the treatment than in the baseline. So the idea, uh, one possible interpretation is that participants reduce the gap between their earnings and their expectation by reducing their transfers. Second result, for the medium wage, participants transfer the same amount in the treatment in the baseline, uh, both at the extensive and intensive margin. So possible interpretation, but uh, that can be uh, criticized is that expectation might be set to 10 euros. Third uh, result for the high wage, participants transfer barely more in the treatment than in the baseline. You see the transfer are on average uh, higher in the treatment than in the baseline, but it's only uh, marginally significant. And participants, uh, on the other hand, are uh, much less likely to transfer zero in the treatment than in the baseline. So we have weak evidence that participants uh, share their gains uh, and maybe some hint to a gain loss asymmetry uh, in this design. So let's now, now uh, turn to the role of emotion. So first, uh, First, this, uh, this graph uh, shows you the, the normalized electrodermal activity upon revelation of the, uh, of the uh, actual wage across uh, the different level of wage. So we see that when uh, wages, uh, actual wages are revealed, especially in the treatments, participants uh, participant experience uh, uh, an important um, uh, emotional reaction that is not different across wages. So that's a that's, that's, uh, uh, first result. And uh, um, so I told you that you cannot uh, infer the valence of emotional reaction by uh, measuring SCR. So um, what, what, what we do is that we build a positive emotion index and negative emotion index based on the salary reported uh, questionnaire about emotions that uh, participants fulfilled. What we find is that for the low wage, uh, and the medium wage participant experience more uh, negative emotions in the treatment compared to the baseline. And uh, that's not the case in the, uh, for the high wage. Symmetrically, participants experience less positive emotion in the treatment uh, than in the baseline for the low and medium wage, uh, but more uh, in the treatment than in the baseline for the high wage. So it means that it seems that positive, negative emotions, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, seem to play a role or be a mechanism that explains the behavioral effect that participants try to reduce uh, their losses by 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 uh, transferring it. So the last uh, thing I wanted to show is this direct uh, test of the effect of emotional arousal on transfer. So here, what we did is that uh, we focused on the on the data from the treatments. And we interacted the level of the wage with a uh, dummy variable indicating a high emotional reaction to the revelation of the wage. And what we find is that uh, we have significant uh, differences between those who have a high emotional reaction to the revelation of the wage and those who have a low reaction to, uh, to uh, the revelation of uh, the wage. So that's, that's it for the result. Uh, let me now conclude. So what we find is this in this paper is that um, expectations are used as reference. So that's, that's uh, what you find, uh, that, that, that's what we find in our behavioral result. And especially, uh, more precisely, we find an effect of expectation violation on altruism. An, uh, 
uh, a way of putting uh, our result is that participants try uh, to chase their subjective losses by being more selfish, which is uh, our first first result. The fact that for the low wage participant transfer less uh, when they were expecting a higher income, and we find a weaker effect for gains, which um, can hint to a gain loss asymmetry. We provide evidence on the role of emotion in this in this uh, behavioral uh, effects. And we also have some hints that I didn't depict here on the role of anticipatory emotion, namely the emotion felt just before revelation that also predict the, uh, the uh, treatment effect, the, 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 the side of the treatment effect. But taken together, <clears throat> the fact that you have a, a, a gain loss asymmetry, at least, or at least more uh, behavioral effect for the low wage than for the high wage, and the fact that you have a lot of negative emotions also for the medium wage um, uh, suggests the fact that actually people don't expect uh, don't expect uh, to get 10 euros in the treatment, but maybe they only expect they consider anything below 15 euros as a loss. So what would be interesting to dig into given this result is um, is uh, more precisely to know how and uh, participants form their expectation. What types of expectation do they use? Is there an heterogeneity in terms of the expectation they use? And maybe uh, more interestingly, uh, whether people self-servingly uh, determine their expectation. For instance, uh, what I mean is, uh, for instance, individual considering any amount below 15 euros as a loss to justify the fact that they become more uh, selfish. And I'm done. Thank you very much for your attention.